Hello friends! Is it a vlog if it doesn't involve my face talking directly to the camera? I assume it is. So I thought I would do a vlog for my 2019 as it was quite a big year. I also thought I'd wrap up this decade by talking about some of the lessons that I've learned over the past 10 years. So at the start of 2019, I went to India. <laughs> It was super amazing. I collaborated with Natya Social and made it to quite a few different dance classes. It was a really incredible trip and it was the best way to start the year. Panisha and I also released our Lamborghini collaboration that I filmed on the very last day of 2018 in Hong Kong. This was a really special one for me because I was born in Hong Kong and I literally never danced in Hong Kong. Never ever done a class in Hong Kong. Like maybe when I was a kid I did ballet, I think. Might have to ask mum. But we got to kind of meet up. I'd done some, like I'd done the choreography mostly in my head. And, you know, she learned the choreography like a champ and we filmed the very next day. So that was really incredible for me. When we got back in at the start of January, I had about seven days to put together this kind of dance project for APT9. APT9 is the Asia Pacific Triennial. It's a big art exhibition um, of, you know, artists from Asia Pacific held at Quag Gomas, which is our art gallery here in Queensland. Dance Masala collaborated with Tapuri Squad and we put together this 15 minute performance that started at Goma and and then led all of these participants. And they didn't know they were participants. They didn't even know that there was even going to be a performance towards um, the art gallery, the Queensland Art Gallery, through dance. So that was a really incredible project to jump right into. My first video collaboration in Australia was Kusna Pachan with Shika. Then I produced the mini festival of Indian dance through Bruce Asia. So that was really quite incredible. I choreographed Chama Chama, which you guys saw a lot of this year. Um, and I also earned my first ramen shirt by eating 100 bowls of ramen. In March, we performed at Holi and we did my choreography to Leisure. This year was also a year where I really felt like I was finding my choreographic voice and that kind of started with my choreogra choreogra choreography to Leisure. I hosted the BADC, Bollywood Australia Dance Competition Dance Battles. I collaborated with Raki in Sydney. I also um, hosted Anisha Bubba here in Brisbane and we did a shoot for her for her Apna Time Aiga video. I spent my birthday incredibly burnt out and there's no image for that. In May, I put on my Bollywood dance competition, BADC, which was a three-day event which comprised of a mixer, so for all the performers to play games and interact with each other, um, the actual competition, and masterclasses with Sonali Badoria. I also hung out with Sonali and organized her national tour. And it was the first national tour that I've ever organized. So that was really awesome. In June, we had a big change of guard at Dance Masala and I also became friends with Akshay and we created Slow Motion. So by July, I had a Creative Mornings talk. So Creative Mornings, all around the world, there's all different chapters and it's kind of like a TED talk. So I had the privilege of doing, I think it was a 15 minute keynote presentation and it sold out. So that was really incredible. We also featured in the Brookwater Golf Club ad, which you can see here. In August, I was invited to do a residency on Russell Island which was super incredible and I worked with all of the children who were there. We entered the Indian Film Festival Melbourne Telstra Bollywood Dance Competition, which is the longest standing Bollywood dance competition in Australia. And we won the beast. 
as you can see by these intense flexes. The week after we performed at Independence Day in Brisbane or India Day Fair, which we've been performing at consistently since it started. And it was a really beautiful thing to come back and, you know, bring the routine that brought us so much success in Melbourne and bring it back home. We also were one of the, I think, two featured entertainment acts for the Bridge to Brisbane, which is this massive, massive race where people, yeah, run a lot. <laughs> in September, we performed at this absolutely insane engagement party for Raj and Shimmel, or Shimmer, and that was a really incredible experience because these clients became our close friends. We choreographed for their parents, which was super, super cute. We choreographed a couple dance for them, as well as for their bridesmaids and groomsmen. And then Kashish and Geets entered my life, which was just the best thing. In October, we did Diwali, of course. I filmed Prada with Kashish and Geeks, and that was our first collaboration. Oh, in September as well, completely forgot. <laughs> we got our first um, Eat Street contract, which was really, really cool. Eat Street is this really amazing food market and night market out in Brisbane, and yeah, there's nothing Dance Masala loves more other than dancing than food. In November, I did my first vlog, which was rad. We also started getting into the habit of filming two or three choreographies on one day. So, really feel like I'm leveling up there. And then finally in December, me and Imdad choreographed I Like It and Gangalita, which we were releasing tomorrow. Ooh. I don't know when I'll post this, so maybe we've already released it. Um, I also got the chance to collaborate with Shireen which we'll be releasing soon, I hope. We packed out two incredible workshops at Woodford Folk Festival, and we had about 150 participants in each, but even towards the end, people were trying to get into the session. I also got the amazing opportunity to represent Australia for the Australia-India Youth Dialogue in Delhi and Chennai, which I am literally leaving for today. So it's been a really massive year. I know this is a bit of a flex. I just really wanted to share all the things that I've done this year. And I want to also share some of the lessons that I've learned this year, which I will do now using video. Hi everyone. I'm in the middle of packing actually to leave for India tonight. It's the 31st of December and it's full circle because I think I flew into India on the same day at this time last year. It's been a really massive year and it's also been a really massive decade. I've been, you know, running a dance-based business for about a decade. So as this decade's ending and a new decade is beginning, I thought I'd just share a few lessons that took me a really long time to learn, but I do feel like I'm kind of there. Um, the first lesson is don't let fear govern your judgment of anything. So if for some reason you're not doing something because you're afraid to, you know, and the more you delve into it, you find the reason really deeply is fear, um, be it trying something new, be it um, changing an old habit, uh, just do it. And I know you have to be ready. So really maybe first ask yourself why it is that you're so afraid of the thing. Um, and kind of find out where that comes from. Like, you know, a lot of us have, like trauma is a really big word, um, or it sounds like a very big word, but a lot of us have traumas. Um, and once we kind of acknowledge them, you know, don't think it's such a like trauma with a capital T sort of word. Once we acknowledge them, we can actually move on. Like, it, and that brings me probably to my second one. And that's acknowledgement. Acknowledgement is huge. Like. You don't necessarily, sometimes when you're upset, need someone to say sorry. You just need them to acknowledge that what they've done has hurt you because it's just validating your reality, like your experience. So often when I'm upset, I just need the person to be like, yeah, you know, that is true. That experience that you've had is true and real for you. Uh, and that's because of my past and that's just something I need. But I think that's actually what a lot of us need. 
And a lot of our disagreements come from a lack of acknowledgement, which just makes us feel like unseen and unheard. And it really hurts people. So if you do something and someone calls you out on it and you know, tells you that it's hurt them for whatever reason, and it might be an innocuous thing, you might never have meant it. You could just say like, oh my God, you know, I can see that that hurt you. And that could be really transformative for them. And if you can, you could just apologize. Like apologies are nothing. Like what is that going to hurt besides your pride? And for me, like, especially in the last like year or so, I've realized life is way too short. There's been a few things this year where I was like, oh, I'm going to dig my heels in and I feel like I'm right. But it really doesn't matter. Life is so short and you're not going to take being right with you to the grave. <laughs> They're not going to write on your gravestone like she was right. They were right. It's like, it's pointless. Uh, what else? Try new things. Um, for a really long time, I was really against um, the whole concept of trying new things because I only wanted to do things that I was good at. In fact, that's the whole reason I got into dance. I got into dance because I was good at it. I was like, well, this is a no brainer. <laughs> going to keep on doing this thing that I'm really good at. Uh, but part of my journey as a teacher has been to remember the beginner experience, to not get too big for my boots, to not get all up in my own ego and be like, oh, I'm so good. Oh, why aren't they getting it? Which, you know, I think all dancers and dance teachers are, like sometimes like get a little that way. And part of me just like keeping a tab on my ego was to always be a beginner to see what I could learn every year and what new style of dance or physical movement or even language which I haven't been very consistent with or editing or what new skill can I learn. Another lesson I learned over the years is don't argue for your worth. If you find yourself arguing or negotiating with people who don't see your inerrant worth, it's a pointless conversation. Like don't, you don't argue with drunks, I hope or people on drugs, you know? So if for some reason they don't see your worth that's there, like there's no point in arguing about it. Just state your worth. If they don't see it, move on. <laughs> They're not your people anyway. And that's another lesson that I've learned. Find your people. Cause not everyone's going to be your people. And I think there was like, I got completely roasted for putting quotes on my Instagram, but I don't care. I love putting quotes on my Instagram. It helps us all out. But I, there was a quote I found on Instagram, <laughs> which said something like, um, if you're so thirsty that you drink from every you know, cup that's offered, you're going to drink poison. And what I take that to mean is if you're just so hungry for connection or you're so hungry for every opportunity, you're going to have like negative experiences because you aren't being selective. And that's the same with feedback. Like I think be very selective with what feedback you receive. Like if you don't respect the person that you're soliciting feedback from, what's the point? Like if the person is clearly, you know, someone who admires you. You're just looking for a yes man. And maybe that's good for you. Like, actually, I won't judge it. Like, you do you. Go wild with that. But for me, like, I realized I needed to be selective. Like, I needed to know it was my crew or it's someone I admire, a mentor of mine. Those were the people I, you know, solicited feedback from. And I also needed to understand when I was in a space for feedback because in the creative process, like if you give feedback too early in the process, it can really bring in anxiety and doubt and all of those really awful things that kill creativity. So make sure you're in the part of the process where you're soliciting feedback, which I think is when you've kind of like exited the experimentation and the fun and the um, kind of creative phase where, you're, where you should be trying every idea. You should be and you've entered the editing phase where you're starting to kind of think analytically about what you've created and it's not quite so precious and vulnerable anymore. So make sure you're in that space to solicit feedback. All right, 
these are all the lessons that I'm sharing today because I really do need to pack. <laughs> I hope you have an incredible start of 2020. I will be in the air as it turns to the new year in many different time zones, which I'm super excited about. And I will see you in the shining vortex of the future. Have a great, great day. Bye.